Ciao everyone, it's Alyssa coming at you with another slow fashion video. This week I am tackling, if you cannot tell, color. Even though I don't have a ton of color in my closet, I still think it's really important to know the principles of mixing and matching and wearing color in a way that can really help you spice up your wardrobe uh, without necessarily having to buy more clothes. So let's jump right in. Starting off with the absolute basics of color, you've got to look at the color wheel. And if you are looking for a more in-depth analysis with the difference between, a, you know, a tint and a hue and a shade and all these different things, then I would definitely recommend uh, Justine Lecomte's video. I'm going to link it up here and in the description box below. It goes a little bit deeper into the actual color wheel and how all of the colors come to be. So I'm keeping it super general and using tips that I have found to be very useful in the past when it comes to actually making use out of the color in my closet. But ultimately there are no rules when it comes to color mixing and matching and wearing what feels good and right for you. So definitely take these tips and apply whatever you like best from them. Now we can jump in. Starting off with the separation in half of the color wheel, one side we have the warm tones, red, yellow, oranges, and on the other half is the cool side of the color wheel. So we've got greens and blues. I think as soon as we start to lump ourselves in only being able to wear warm colors, whether it's because of our style personality or our skin and hair tone, then you're really kind of missing out on some fun dressing opportunities. So I think it's best to approach these tones with an open mind because what's important to look for in a certain color, whether your complexion requires more cooler or warmer tones, it's the undertone of the garment. Unfortunately, identifying a garment's undertone is actually really difficult because you have to compare it with other similar colors or against its true color. For example, if we're taking red, then you'd have to put it up against a true red or a couple of other different shades of red to tell whether you're looking at a warmer or a cooler red. So unless you're going to wander around with a color wheel in your pocket at all times, which I think is a little bit unrealistic, but hey, if that's something you want to do, go for it. Um, I think it's just easiest to put the garment up on or around your face. That way you can tell what it's going to do to your complexion. And there's nothing stopping you from wearing a color that looks absolutely horrible up around your face, but maybe it's in a shoe or a handbag or a pair of pants. I just think lumping ourselves in a certain style or color category it's just no fun. Now, when it comes to actually styling and wearing these warmer and cooler tones, there are a couple of ways that you can play around with them. The first is wearing a monochromatic warm or cool look. So it doesn't necessarily have to be all the same color, but the fact that you're wearing all cooler tones, for example, really is pleasing to the eye. If you want to create a look that is actually a little bit more interesting and kind of has that thing that seems a little bit off but really cool, then you could wear a mix of cool and warm tones. This is a little bit more difficult to pull off, so how I would recommend doing it is wearing either an all cool or all warm look and then accessorizing it using the opposite tone. Wearing contrasting colors. This means that you're wearing colors that are on opposite sides of the color wheel from each other. The more color that you have in between the colors that you're wearing, the more contrasting those colors are. I hope that made sense. When it comes to styling hacks and wearing contrasting colors, there are so many things that you can do. The first most obvious thing that you can do with contrasting colors is color blocking your outfit. In my opinion, for best results when it comes to color blocking, stick with two contrasting base colors and add a third contrasting color via an accessory, like a pair of shoes, a handbag, or a scarf. Now, when it comes to color blocking contrasting colors, you don't only have to use solids. This is a great time to start incorporating prints and neutrals into contrasting color blocked outfits to either bring the look together and create a more cohesive feeling look, or making it a little bit more bold. The other way you could tone down a color blocked look using contrasting colors, oh my goodness, how many alliterations could I use in this YouTube video? By adding 
a garment or an accessory that is the same color as one of those contrasting colors that you're using but toned down. Either it's a darker shade or a lighter shade. That way you're still getting the whole feel and effect of those contrasting colors but it's a bit toned down that way it's more pleasing to the eye. Another way that you can use contrasting colors is by playing around with proportion. Whether you want certain parts of your proportions to be either exaggerated or diminished. And I'll take the most common example which is a pear-shaped body and that is if you want to balance out your top and your bottom half wearing a lighter or brighter color on top and contrasting it with a darker color on the bottom can really just create a balanced visual so color contrast doesn't have to just be about the color it can also be about tricking the eye into thinking it's seeing a different silhouette Finally, you can apply a contrasting color to an all neutral look. You don't necessarily have to match all of your accessories, but I think it does create a more impactful look if you have both shoes and bag that contrast a more neutral base outfit. Analogous color combinations are the most difficult ones to pull off because these are the colors that are closest to each other on the color wheel. There really is no hard and fast rule when wearing analogous colors because it's something that is already quite harmonious to the eye because these colors are close to each other on the color wheel and do look good when sitting one right next to the other. Sticking with two base analogous colors allows you to play with accessories or prints and neutral colors to accessorize and finish off the outfit. Similar to your contrasting color looks, you can also incorporate neutrals as part of your base analogous colored look as well. You don't have to be head to toe similar colors at all. That can be difficult to pull off if you don't have a lot of color in your closet. Wearing analogous colors head to toe is so similar but a little bit different from wearing a monochromatic head to toe look. Wearing a monochromatic color head to toe doesn't mean you have to be in the exact same shade of that color. You can decide, for example, to wear blue head to toe, but have different textures and different shades. So a pale blue paired with a navy. And this is where knowing that an analogous color palette can mix into your monochromatic look can really be beneficial. I don't think it's realistic that we'll have shoes and handbags that match our monochromatic outfit. You're probably thinking that you can't talk about neutrals in a video that is about color, but I really do think that knowing your neutrals are equally as important because they can play a big part in either playing up a very colorful and contrasting look or playing it down and making it a little bit more soft and harmonious. There are four neutrals that I always go to in my head and those are cognac brown, cream, gray, and black. And I've separated these into contrasting neutrals and softer neutrals. The contrasting neutrals that I find add a little bit of punch and kick up the drama and interest in my outfits are black and the cognac brown. These are more saturated, more rich neutrals, whereas the gray and the cream are a little bit more softer and really tend to add more harmony and softness to a colorful look. Okay, I hope you found it interesting. That is what I have for you today. Color mastered. I hope you liked it. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are a color wearer or not, I'm always so curious to know. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will be back next week with another slow fashion video. Ciao!